Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland, and here I am outside Holy Trinity Church, uh, Clapham. So this is in London. Um, now, Holy Trinity Church has existed since the Middle Ages. However, it wasn't always on this site. Uh, it was about a mile to the east of here. Uh, so this uh, site was built as Holy Trinity Church in 1776. You can see the uh, neoclassical design with the porticos out there, the Corinthian proportions of eight to three, which the Greeks thought was the golden mean. Uh, that was the perfection of proportions in terms of aesthetics. Uh, and uh, the brickwork there is not too pretty, not horrid certainly, but it's by no means the most ornate church there is. So this church is most closely associated with the Clapham sect because this is the area of London uh, called Clapham. Um, the Clapham sect were a group of evangelical Anglicans, so they're members of the Church of England, but they believed uh, in wor worshipping with uh, greater uh, zeal. Um, enthusiasm was, was a criticism in the 18th century, um, and these uh, men were also quite moralistic in a good way. Um, they're best known for campaigning for the abolition of slavery, and uh, some of the famous members of this informal group were William Wilberforce, um, Zachary Macaulay, father of Thomas Babington Macaulay, uh, Thomas Clarkson, John Venn, who was a clergyman, the inventor of Venn diagrams, uh, and uh, there are several more, perhaps too numerous um, to mention. Um, so stick with William Wilberforce, the most famous of them. He came from Hull, and there's a statue up in his hometown, and his father was a prominent Yorkshire uh, merchant, of buying timber from Scandinavia, selling it to the Royal Navy and other shipbuilders and so on. So very wealthy in modern terms. Um, he went to school in Yorkshire. I've actually been to the one that this name slips my mind at the moment, um, and later to Oxford, elected to Parliament, lived here, so he could be, be in, go, go to Parliament quite easily. They didn't spend much time in their constituencies. Um, some of them had little connection to their constituencies in those days. And there was, no, there was no salary for members of parliament. Only very wealthy men could be members of parliament. Anyway, they got, in, way back in the 1780s, they got uh, the House of Commons to vote to abolish slavery. However, the House of Lords, um, uh, using its role as a revising second chamber to uh, vote down the foolish passions of the lower chamber, they blocked the abolition of slavery for 50 years. Uh, obviously, it's an absolute disgrace that this horrific crime against humanity took place at a gargantuan scale for decades after that. Finally, in 1833, slavery was abolished uh, in almost all portions of the British Empire. It was to be phased out over five years. Um, the, the slaves were going to be turned into apprentices and prepared for liberty in a most patronising manner. However, distasteful as this fudge was, it was the only way to get enough political support to pass it. Um, by the 1830s, um, even pro-slavery pro advocates had to admit that slavery was cruel, so they had to come up with their other arguments. They were taking their ball to a different part of the beach, saying it was an economic necessity, or uh, these poor enslaved people weren't ready for freedom, or things like that, or it would create chaos, and it was an interference with property rights. So the anti-slavery caucus had to deal with all these arguments, however specious, and finally get it through. And then as another stop to finally defeat this very well-funded and connected pro-slavery lobby, um, the um, anti-slavery people had to agree to compensation, not for the slaves, but uh, shockingly for the people who'd held others in servitude, 20 million pounds. Obviously that's a pittance in governmental terms these days, but it was a staggering sum at the time. Um, in fact, the, uh, the date for uh, emancipation of people uh, held in slavery was brought forward sli slightly, and they gained their liberty in um, 1837. So that was that. Seen as the most horrific example of colonialism by some uh, pro-slavery people in the colonies. That's Holy Trinity Church. Um, anyway, so William Wilberforce, he was a Tory, um, a Pittite, but uh, despite wanting to abolish slavery, he didn't seem, see any uh, resonances between the, the lot of slaves and exploited people uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, because since the 1770s, since the James Somerset case, a judge ruled, Lord Mansfield ruled, that slavery did not exist in English law. It had been, it had been abolished in England in the 11th century by the Normans. It could exist in the colonies. But uh, some of the working class are very exploited and did not have the right to vote. But Wilberforce uh, was very much a small C conservative. Well, the Conservative Party emerged right at, towards the end of his life. Um, and he didn't believe that uh, the working class should be permitted to vote. Uh, another perhaps curious thing about him is uh, he... Um, 
really believed in animal rights and is very compassionate towards animals, tending wounded animals, you ought to watch a film about him called Amazing Grace. Um, and John Newton is a character in it as well. John Newton, the man who wrote Amazing Grace, nothing to do with the scientist Sir Isaac Newton. So John Newton was a, a, a captain of a slave ship and uh, one time there's a storm which almost sunk his ship and he fell to his knees and he prayed to the Lord that if, if God spared his life, he would, um, he would become moral. Only after that did he face up to how horrifically cruel slavery was and become an ardent anti-slavery activist. So you've seen the church from another angle there. Look at this plaque here, the bomb damage in the Second World War, which they have deliberately not repaired because to remind uh, future generations what war does. So you can read the inscription. Towards the end, it's got the names of some of the anti-slavery people. So I'll read a bit of it towards the end. Who in the latter part of the 18th century and early part of the 19th centuries laboured so abundantly for national righteousness and the conversion of the heathen, rested not until the curse of slavery was swept away from all parts of the British dominions. So that's that. Um, Holy Trinity Church.